Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into the most majestic and fearsome creatures in all of Westeros, the dragons. If you thought keeping track of Daenerys' three dragons in Game of Thrones was tough, wait until you hear about the 17 dragons we encounter in House of the Dragon. We're going to break down all the dragons, along with their riders, so you can stay on top of who's who and what's what in this epic prequel series. Let's kick things off with the dragons we've already seen, starting with the iconic Cyrax. First up, we have Cyrax, the giant yellow-scaled she-dragon ridden by Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen. Cyrax has been with Rhaenyra since 104 AC, and we see them flying high over King's Landing in the very first episode. Cyrax is an impressive beast, not only for her size, but also for her fierce loyalty to Rhaenyra. One of the most memorable moments early on is the standoff between Cyrax and Demon Targaryen's dragon, Caraxes highlighting the intense family dynamics and power struggles at play. Cyrax is still active and laying dragon eggs, which is super exciting for the future of House Targaryen. In one of the episodes, we see her lay three eggs, setting the stage for even more dragon riders and more dragon drama in the seasons to come. Next, we have Caraxes, known as the Blood Worm. This large red dragon is ridden by Demon Targaryen, who became Caraxes' rider in 105 AC after the death of Prince Aemon Targaryen. Caraxes made a huge impression from the get-go, showcasing both his fearsome nature and his bond with Demon. Despite his menacing appearance, Caraxes has shown moments of tenderness with his rider, adding depth to his character. Caraxes is a key player in the Dance of the Dragons, and the trailers and episodes hint at some epic aerial battles to come. Watching Caraxes in action is always a thrill, especially when we get to see his ferocity in full display. The Silver Grey Dragon Sea Smoke is another fascinating character. Laenor Valerian, son of Rhaenys Targaryen, became Sea Smoke's rider by 101 AC. Their debut in Episode 3 of Season 1 was spectacular, especially during the battle against the Crab Feeder and the Stepstones. Although Lenor fakes his own death and goes into hiding, leaving Sea Smoke behind, the dragon remains an important asset. Currently residing in Driftmark, Sea Smoke's fate and potential new rider remain a tantalizing mystery for future episodes. Rhaenys Targaryen, known as the Queen Who Never Was, rides Melees, the swift red and pink she-dragon also known as the Red Queen. Bonded in 87 AC, Melees was once one of the fastest dragons, and her appearance in Episode 5 of Season 1 was a highlight. With a crown of thorns around her head, Melees made a dramatic entrance during Aegon II's coronation, causing chaos without killing her enemies. Rhaenys pledges her dragon to Rhaenyra's cause, promising some thrilling action in the skies above Westeros. Prince Jacaris Valerian, Rhaenyra's son, rides Vermax, a young green dragon who hatched in his crib. Despite a rocky start, by the season one finale, Jace and Vermax have formed a solid bond. Vermax, who dislikes cold weather, is set to accompany Jace to the Airy and Winterfell in future seasons, promising some intriguing interactions as they seek support for Rhaenyra's claim. Vagar, one of the three dragons that helped Aegon the Conqueror, is a legendary creature. Initially ridden by Queen Visenya, Vagar later bonds with Lena Valerian and then Aemon Targaryen. Aemon's claiming of Vagar was a dramatic moment, leading to a fight where he lost an eye. Vagar's role in the Dance of the Dragons is pivotal, especially after killing Prince Lucerys and his dragon Arax. This ancient dragon, now ridden by Aemon, is set to bring even more fire and fury to the upcoming war. Dreamfire, a slim blue she-dragon with silver wings, once belonged to Princess Rhaena Targaryen. Currently residing in the Dragon Pit at King's Landing, Dreamfire is a potential game-changer in the Civil War, waiting for a new rider to claim her. Some theories suggest Dreamfire might have laid the eggs that became Daenerys' dragons in Game of Thrones, adding another layer of intrigue to her story. Vermithor, the bronze beast known as the Bronze Fury, was once ridden by King Jaehaerys I. Unclaimed at the start of the Dance of the Dragons, Vermithor's appearance in the season 1 finale, when Demon sings to lure him out, hints at a major role in the conflict to come. <laughs> Finding a rider for Vermithor could be crucial for Rhaenyra's side in the war. The small, agile Arax, ridden by Prince Lucerys Valerian, met a tragic end in the season 1 finale, killed by Vagar above Storm's End. Arax's death is a poignant moment, underscoring the brutal nature of the dragon battles to come. Valerion the Dread, 
The beast of Dagon rode across the sea. Though Beleriand the Black Dread doesn't appear alive in House of the Dragon, his presence looms large. Aegon the Conqueror's dragon and later ridden by Viserys the Fur, Beleriand was a massive black-winged dragon with a fierce temperament. His skull serves as a reminder of the Targaryen legacy and the power of dragons. In addition to the dragons we've seen, there are several more we'll encounter in the series. Sunfire, Moondancer, and Silverwing are among the full-sized dragons each with their unique traits and riders. The latest trailers and episodes have given us glimpses of these magnificent creatures, promising more epic dragon action. Beyond the bonded dragons, there are three wild dragons on Dragonstone, Grey Ghost, Sheepstealer, and the Cannibal. These unclaimed dragons represent a wild card in the Civil War, as both sides vie for their allegiance. Grey Ghost is known for his elusive nature. He's described as shy and reclusive, rarely seen by anyone, and prefers to hunt fish around Dragonstone. His grey scales help him blend into the sea and sky, making him one of the most difficult dragons to spot. Because of his elusive behavior, not much is known about Grey Ghost's temperament or fighting capabilities, but his presence adds a mysterious element to the Targaryen arsenal. Sheepstealer is another intriguing wild dragon, known for his habit of preying on sheep. Unlike Grey Ghost, Sheepstealer is more aggressive and has been seen more frequently by the locals of Dragonstone. His brown scales make him less visually striking, but his ferocity is not to be underestimated. Sheepstealer eventually bonds with a lowborn girl named Nettles, one of the few instances where a dragon bonds with someone outside the Targaryen bloodline. This unique pairing highlights the unpredictable nature of dragon rider bonds. The cannibal is perhaps the most fearsome of the wild dragons. He earned his name due to his penchant for devouring other dragons, including their eggs and hatchlings. The cannibal is described as a massive, black-scaled dragon with a brutal and savage nature. No one has ever dared to claim him, and he remains a wild and deadly force on Dragonstone. His presence is a constant threat to both sides of the Civil War, and his potential involvement in the conflict could tip the scales dramatically. While the show covers many dragons, there are a few mentioned in the novels that may not appear on screen. These include... Known as the Blue Queen, Tessarion is a beautiful dragon with cobalt blue scales and copper eyes. She is ridden by Prince Darren Targaryen, the youngest son of King Viserys the One. Tessarion is known for her grace and agility in the air, and her distinctive appearance makes her one of the most visually striking dragons in the Targaryen fleet. Tyraxes is ridden by Prince Joffrey Valerian, the third son of Rhaenyra Targaryen. Though not as large or fearsome as some of the other dragons, Tyraxes is still a formidable presence. His bond with Joffrey represents the younger generation of dragon riders stepping into their roles during the Dance of the Dragons. Stormcloud is a hatchling dragon bonded to King Aegon III, also known as Aegon the Younger. Despite his small size, Stormcloud plays a significant role in Aegon III's life, particularly during his escape from the downfall of King's Landing. Stormcloud's bond with Aegon III highlights the enduring connection between the Targaryens and their dragons, even in times of great peril. These hatchling dragons are bonded to Princess Jahera and Prince Jaehaerys Targaryen, respectively. Though too young to participate in the larger battles of the Dance of the Dragons, their presence signifies the continuing legacy of House Targaryen. Morgul and Shrikos represent hope for the future, as the Targaryen line endures through their young riders. These dragons add to the rich tapestry of House Targaryen's history and the grandeur of the Dance of the Dragons. Even if they don't make it onto the screen, their stories in George R.R. Martin's novels provide depth and context to the epic saga. So who's your favorite dragon so far? And which dragon rider pair are you most excited to see in action in future seasons? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the world of Westeros. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.